Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's Semi Original Guy, aka Mr. Cannon from Advances by Web, bringing you another live league game of the day. Today, we are on cross country rivalry. This is a base light matchup with an airport that is actually guarded by a missile in Fog of War. So, we do have comm towers on this map, we do have open HQs on this map, we do have a lab in the center of this map, which sort of works as a tiebreaker of sorts. So, we also have Kindle and we have Sammy. So, Kindle will get 40% firepower on ter urban terrain to her units. Uh, her co power will do 3 damage globally to any opposing unit that is on urban terrain. And her super co power will increase your firepower by 3% per city owned. And also get a massive firepower bonus when on a city. Same with. Um, Urban Blight, her co-power, but it's a little bit less. It's 80% for Urban Blight, and it's like 130% for High Society. So, stay away from those cities, folks. And we also have Sammy. So, Sammy has a day-to-day. -day. We'll get plus 30% firepower and plus 50% capture bonus for all of her infantry and mechs. Her transport units will gain plus one movement, and all other direct combat units will lose 10% firepower. She does have double time as her co-power, which will increase the movement range of her infantry and mechs by plus one and give it a small firepower bonus. And the Victory March Super Co-Power will give her infantry and mechs plus two movement, increase firepower, and allow a instant capture of any property captured that turn so that means that even a one hp or any hp infantry or mech can instantly capture any enemy property so you got to watch out for that folks um all right so we have slain and we have inland emperor today as our combatants so let's go ahead and get into this one here folks um on day one two and three you guys know the deal it is the standard infantry builds because yeah i gotta get the infantry on the field folks it is the number one priority in events was by web the number two priority in, in the the number two priority in Advanced Wars by Web is getting a recon on the field. <laughs> That's the other thing that you have to do. But Inland Upper decides to not actually go with recon and goes with a APC opener. So APC opener for Sammy is not really too bad. You do get plus one movement on those APCs and you are able to funnel some mechs to the front line pretty quickly. Now mechs are incredibly, incredibly effective as Sammy. This is the 130% firepower bonus, so hopefully we'll be seeing some gnarly mech play coming up here. Alright, we have a mech, and we have a second APC, so very curious. I normally don't see two APCs, but I guess it's not really super uncommon to have two APCs. Um, because, I mean, you just get more mechs, more infantry fairies, you get the infantry all over the map, and it can be pretty good. But, the problem with two APCs is you're losing out on a vehicle, right? So, losing out on a recon, don't have as much vision. Things can go dire for you pretty quick, folks. Now, it looks like Slam takes the first engagement here with a recon, taking an infantry all the way down to 5 HP. But, however, the capture is still going to be going through because we are dealing with Sammy, who has that increased capture rate by 50% on her units. Technically, this guy is actually all the way down to 5. And even if you continue to capture, I'm pretty sure that a 5 HP capture will still go to about 7. So, yeah, that is still going to be going through, folks. Alrighty, so we capture that. Mech takes a shot on the missile, who actually did see the mech and the APC coming. So now... Slim is going to have some knowledge. He's going to have some knowledge of what's been going on over here. He knows that the APCs are in play. But he does manage to snipe out an infantry right here, so that's not too bad. So we eliminated an infantry in a base light matchup, which is huge. Uh, because now your opponent has to actually build another infantry. Now, mind you, it is possible that maybe their plan was just to build an infantry anyways, but... You did force that by, folks, because they do need infantry in order to capture properties. And we have a capture from the mech onto the airport at the moment, which is pretty good. And this is nice, too, because this guy is actually baiting and attacking from this recon. And we have a nasty little mech here on the mountain ready to pounce on anything that comes up and attacks. So I think that's going to be pretty good. Pretty good usage out of the APCs so far. We do have lots of mechs on the front lines, so... Hopefully we're going to be seeing some more, folks. Alright, so tank moves in. Um, ooh, both recons actually move in to attack right now, which is 
really gnarly for these mechs, I'm not gonna lie. Both of these mechs are about to get mad value, just completely eliminating all vision from the map. Look at that. Would you just look at it? It's beautiful. It's a work of art, folks. Lovely. Alright, so day nine continues on, and we shimmy our units around. Builds the classy medium tank. It is looking classy up in here, folks. Inland Emperor, a true gentleman building the classic medium tank. Now, Slame is way ahead in properties at the moment, 17 to 14. Possibly could be due to the early transports. Now, that is a possibility, however, can't really fault Sammy for wanting to go transports. I mean, transports are pretty good, and if you're mech gaming, then you want to be having transports for sure. Um, but Inland Emperor definitely gonna have to get some properties here pretty soon in order to stay in the game against Kindle. Kindle with 17,000 funds is a force to be reckoned with um, against Sammy. Mainly because once you get into that 17,000 fund uh, sort of aspect here, then you are gonna be dealing in classy medium tank territory. Where Kindle could potentially just spam out a medium tank every single turn. And there's really not too much that Sammy can do in order to counter that because infantry and mechs can't really do a whole lot of damage against the classic medium tank. You can build battle copters, but the battle copters are weak because it's Sammy, right? And Slame could easily go like medium tank, anti-air, medium tank, anti-air, medium tank, anti-air, and just yada yada yada, complete the process, and just completely wipe off all infantry off the field of battle. So that is definitely something that could be happening. Does get another double snipe down here and is moving an artillery in position to hopefully claim the airport for himself here pretty soon. Um, Sammy does have a little bit of potential for an attack here, but considering that Slame is about to get Urban Blight, we might be seeing an Urban Blight this turn. It is maybe possible? Yep, I think we're gonna get it. Oh, big old urban blight here, folks. Unfortunately, it hits the mech, hits the missile, hits these two units down here, and hits the battlecopter. But the classy medium tank has gotten away unscathed. And it is joined on the battlefield by Slain, who also busts out the classy medium tank. Would you just look at it, folks? We have a double medium tank on the field. Oh boy. This is going to get pretty nice pretty quick here. Now goes for the double hit with this guy and this guy weakening both of these guys. This guy's going to get healed up to 9 next turn, which is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Could we have done this a little bit differently? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ugh. See? Can't actually reach with the Battlecopter. The Battlecopter could strike this one first. That would be pretty good. But we don't really have any other options, so I guess the best option, the best thing that we could think of is to sack the mech to get the wall break to do the attack. Now, I think maybe bringing the medium tank up north here and then maybe going in for this attack and just doing extra damage to it might not have been too bad. We don't know if he's got tanks in the, in the shade or not, but we could do a lot of damage to one tank. And then we would still have a mech here left over. I mean, this is, I fear for that tank right there. I feel like it's gonna take a, gonna get hit for a lot of damage, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Indeed, day 12. Oh, and the missile survives the attack, so did not get the full 70% roll on that guy. And Slame actually pulls back up north, which is a pretty smart idea, I guess. I mean, you could go in for this attack, but it is kind of risky, considering that um, Inland Epper is going full battlecopter support over here. So bring them back, get the heals, come in with the anti-air. Two medium tanks. Two medium tanks, folks. Absolutely weird. Um, my god. <laughs> my god, things are gonna get... This match has gotten extremely classy here very, very quick. Um, I probably wouldn't bother going in for the captures of these properties at the moment. I think I would uh, figure out something else to do with those infantry at the moment because this is, once again... Most likely just throwing away two infantry, which is not really what you want to do. Yeah, there goes the two infantry. Technically three infantry. 
Ooh, well, one of them only had one hit point. Four infantry, four infantry and a mech god this turn. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's not good. That's not good at all for our friend Inland Emperor, who is sitting at 15,000 funds to slams 18,000 funds, 19 to 18 units, and 18 minutes and one second on the clock to two minutes and seven seconds. So Inland Emperor is playing on increment and is going to have to make some very, very quick decisions if he's going to be staying in this game. Alright, so do a little shimmy, get some vision. Uh, probably would have kept this guy back. It's not really worth it to see like a whole lot over here if you're not attacking, so keep him back and wait until you sort of have like a better, better option, better things to see. That is a strong position over here from Slame, actually. It makes a huge play to go grab the, the Calm Tower here. He's going to be baiting in quite a few attacks here. Pops the Urban Blight. Actually manages to hit another Battlecopter, taking it down to seven. Two Battlecopters down to seven, and a tank and an infantry, and another infantry in the center. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Things are getting quite brutal. All right, so day 14. We do see the classy medium tank on the city. I am just absolutely praying. I'm praying that the Battlecopter does not bother going and attacking this guy because that is 100% not worth it. If anything, your optimum target would be to bring the Battlecopter down and eliminate these guys in the middle because they're out of position. You can actually do quite a bit of damage to those guys if you go down and attack them. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the play. Very nice. So we're victory marching, but I don't really think that there's a whole lot for us to victory march. We grab the comm tower, which is which is fine, I guess. Um, we're going to be securing the, the firepower because it is likely that Slane might get this comm tower. I mean, judging by just the, the presence of units down south, I could probably safely say that he's probably going to be getting that calm tower, <laughs> especially with like a medium tank and an artillery right there. It's uh, it's highly likely, highly likely that it's going to be going through, folks. Um, ouch, ouch. That is a big ouch, and the southern front has been hit. Wait, no, we did not. We didn't. We didn't. Did, did I just... Did I miss that? We did not. Oh, boy! Why? Why? <laughs> was it to get? Wait, was it to get like? Was it to get super? Let me just let me just double check that. No, we pop super first. No, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. He's got like two hundred percent firepower bonus right now. When he went for that attack, that is not gonna work. No, bring that guy down south, like. The only thing you're doing is you're just sapping a little bit of his money in exchange for a battle copter. So that's like totally not worth. It. Like if your roll on a medium tank on a city is like 20%, just just don't take it. Just don't take the attack. It's just it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Keep your unit count up and like catch that medium tank off guard somewhere. Yeah, see, this is, it does, like, you do 40% damage, but what you're really doing is 20% damage, and you're losing a Battlecopter. That's what's really happening here. <laughs> so, that's a little bit rough. But we do have tons of classic mutant tanks on the field. So we have one here, uh, one here, one here, one here, and a one down here. So this is definitely some kind of a medium tank show, folks. Now we're going to see another classy medium tank. <gasps> oh, we got another classy medium tank, folks. All right. Slame does have a co-power ready to go. And Inland Emperor also has a co-power ready to go. So let's get some captures here. Why are we not attacking the medium tank? I mean, I get attacking this guy. But unless you actually KO the anti-airs, they're just going to be able to still destroy your units. Like, I mean, probably, like, I'm gonna say, like, maybe even as little as, like, a 
3 HP anti-air from a city could probably either clear or come close to clearing a Battlecopter at 8 HP, especially with Urban Blight. That is without a doubt going to be able to clear an or a, a, a Battlecopter. That's that's what I'm thinking, a Battlecopter. Oh boy, <laughs> there he goes. Oh no. Oh god, it's so it's so unfortunate. It's it's definitely definitely unfortunate. Um, Inland Emperor about to get his Calm Tower stolen. About to get the um, city down here stolen. Battlecopter build. I mean, he's not doing bad for income now because we are even for income. And to be fair, he's have to make some very very quick moves here, playing on increments. So nothing against these moves. You know, it is ex. Extremely difficult to come up with really good plays when you're low on time. So is what it is. It's perfectly fine at the end of the day. Um, so let's see. Let's see what he decides to do here. I mean, probably if I was in his situation, what I would do is I would actually you know what he could do. You know what he could do is he could possibly send. I like I would full send this flipping. APC to the middle and then loop around here and put an infantry in the forest and then one two three four five victory march that flipping HQ like I swear to god that's probably the only way that I can see Inland Emperor actually winning this game but also I will give him much praise because he had 26,000 money and he did not build a stinky Neo tank. so beautiful Beautiful stuff. Resisting the urge. Resisting the dire pull of the Neo Tank. So many people fall victim to the dire pull of the stinky Neo Tank. It just sucks them in. It just consumes them like some sort of a festering orb inside of their psyche. But no, not Inland Emperor. He does not give in. He is a classy fella and he will stay that way. It doesn't matter if he wins, loses, or anything. It's all about the class. All right, so unfortunately, I think this is a dire mistake. So we actually um, expose our infantry. If we had put our infantry right here, we could have victory marched this HQ. Oh, if only, like if only, I swear, I swear. Could have been possible. Like, look at this movement, right? So if we take this guy and attack this guy, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, drop. Boop! Easy peasy. And then we can even bring the um, the recon over here to, like, scout it out to make sure that we have, like, pathing for it. Ugh. <laughs> it could have been possible. I think... I'm pretty sure, like, that's a game-ending mistake right here, I think. That's, like, that's not gonna really... Yeah, we lose that infantry. And look, he had nothing in position to actually reach the HQ minus this Battlecopter. And this Battlecopter has been a thirsty, blood-sucking mosquito. So the second he saw any sort of open skin down here, I can bet your bottom dollar he would have went down and attacked it. He would have just zoned in on it, stuck his little mosquito stinger in there, and just sucked the life out of whatever he attacked. And then, I don't know, gone and bred in a swamp somewhere. That's probably what he would have done. Um, but in the meantime, Inland Emperor could have went up there and capped the HQ. So, it could have been pretty good for him, but I think that's probably... It might not be all. It might not be it. Because we're going to hold on to the... The victory march. So this could be pretty good. And it looks like we might be pulling out of the north. Yeah, okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to pull out of the north. Oh, yeah, we're pulling. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, so we're doing a full pull out of the north, and we are sending everything down south. So it looks like we might be doing a mad push for the mid to grab the HQ. That could be what is happening here. And if that's the case, things could get pretty good. Um, Slam is playing it very, very safe, though. He's got no idea where the army is. So he's got no vision here. So what he's doing is he's spreading out his army. So no matter where Inland Emperor decides to attack, he's going to be met with some kind of resistance. So very smart. Very well played there. 
But let's see if it's enough. It depends on if Slame is going to shift his units around again. Let's see where he decides to shift. So he sends a few north, doesn't see anything. Spots a tank down south, and now he's starting to think. He's starting to get suspicious of what's going on down south. Hmm. Inland Emperor does a little bit of an attack down south as well. So he's exposed part of his army, but he didn't expose all of his army. Well, let's see what Slame decides to do here. So Slame spots... Okay, so Slame definitely sees what's up. And he goes in for the attack, and he brings the majority of his units into position here. This is a hefty force to be dealing with. Three medium tanks, four battlecopters, two anti-airs, two artillery units, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven infantry. And recon. And that's not even the whole army. So pop the victory march. And I think that's... That's it, yeah. That's all. That's all we're going to be able to do today, folks. Unfortunately, Inland Emperor was unable to contend with the pure swarm that was slim as Kindle. Managed to just slither their way in there and just high society all over the place. So it was, it was quite the battle indeed. Congratulations, Slam. I think he played incredibly well. Congratulations to Inland Emperor. Despite being very low on time for quite a long time there, uh, you held your own and you made the best plays possible. And I think this definitely had some potential. If Slam had not spread his units out like this, and if he had, like, let's say full send over here with, like, well, let's say like this entire half of the army. This push could have easily went mid and easily captured that HQ. But unfortunately, the, the play just wasn't there today. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the content today. I definitely enjoyed watching that game. And if you did enjoy it, consider leaving a like, a comment, or subscribe. I will see you all in the next one. Take care of yourselves. And bye bye for now.